hello guys you guys are welcome to another of my tutorial in, in today's tutorial i'll be telling you guys all about dramatic portrait from how to set up the gear you need your thoughts what you need to be plan how to plan for a dramatic portrait the final result and i'll be showing you also some examples of the photos i have taken my name is Adigo Kalawi. i am a portrait and a wedding photographer and i have been a photographer and a videographer for i would say around 12 to 13 years right now so i've been around in the industry and one thing that people appreciate so much is you know pictures that would just make them to you know make their jaw to drop and one of the things that i love about dramatic portraits and i want to talk about some of the advantages of dramatic portrait but before that what is actually a dramatic portrait they are these are just um, portrait that you, you take they are very moody dark images uh, they are very dramatic maybe you're shooting it in a daylight in a daytime and it looks like you're shooting it in in the evening or it has some just drama to the image and it creates some you know some effect that makes people to think wow you know where was this picture taken how was it taken you know it, it, it just makes people to guess and one of the first thing I love about dramatic portrait and why I love it so much is the fact that number one, it saves you a lot of time when it comes to post-production. When you are editing dramatic portrait, because you're using mostly off-camera flash, you know, by the time you use that flash and you do your settings very well, you spend less time editing. And that's what you want to be doing as a photographer. You want to spend less time editing rather than you, you know, spending a lot of time editing is going to affect strain your eyes affect your eyesight make you more tired and you can easily get burned out and so you want to spend less time editing and most of my portrait if properly done they come out even nice in some cases you just need to do a few tricks here and here and in fact i put out pictures before that i took especially a dramatic portrait that i didn't have to do anything at all and they look so crisp and beautiful straight out of camera so um th these are the advantages i mean some of the the disadvantages of having a, a dramatic portrait is that obviously you will need gears you will need off camera flash to be able to do them so it's an extra equipment that you have to carry and you also need like you know to buy strobe that can use battery because obviously if you're doing it outdoor uh, you will need battery powered ones so it's like buying something that you know is going to be a little bit expensive but mostly we can get all this uh, light now for as cheap as 200 pound or if you want to go to like 300 or 400 pound they are not as expensive you can even use use a speed light you know to be able to get these photos as well and so these are very great so let's start also with from the planning so how do you plan for a, a, a dramatic portrait the best way to plan for it is to first of all scout the location that you want to use and determine the time of the day you want to do it the best time to kind of do all this dramatic portrait mostly is outdoor and probably during the day especially when there's the sun you know during summer time or whatever the weather when the weather is nice out there and you know you want to take someone on a, a beach during the sunny weather or in the desert or even in a, in a normal place as, as long as the environment is nice and good even if it's not good you can blow out the environment and so you need to scan the environment and look for a location that you, you like and or that your client will appreciate as well and once you scout that location as something that you like and um, probably you like the location because of some of the design in the area or because of some artifact or some you know some kind of architecture building or it could be different things that make you to like the environment but scouting an environment is very important the second thing is to think about what the person will wear. Um, if your client is someone who is asking you for suggestion, then you need to look for, to understand colors and to see, okay, this environment, you know, maybe there's a lot of brown, or maybe there's a lot of green, what can complement those environments? You need to start to think of what the person might be wearing. And also you need to think about, the next thing you need to think about is now your gear. Now, what are the gears that you need for a normal dramatic portrait number one you will need obviously your camera you will need your lens and my idea of a lens is a lens with a wide aperture so you're looking at something from f1.2 f1.4 you know 
uh, f1.8 i would suggest those are very good for especially for dramatic portrait i mean you can use any one you can use you know even 2.8 and all that but i think if you have a wider aperture it gives you more flexibility to kind of if you want to do some blurry and um, you want to blur out the background it probably some of the background seems it's not nice and you don't want people to notice what's in the background you can blow it down i mean it gives you a lot of flexibility so that would be my suggestion when you're getting lenses you can you know you can use lens lens from any brand um for the camera you know you can use any mirrorless camera it doesn't matter the camera you are using it doesn't matter the brand as long as you can shoot uh, one thing that you you must know is that the camera needs to be able the shutter speed especially it should be able to go to like one th one over 8,000, um, the shutter speed should be able to go up to that, especially when you go to high speed sync. Um, I will explain that a little bit, but you know, you should be able to have a camera that can go to like at least, I would say, the minimum is one, one over 4,000. You need that because when you're shooting dramatic portraits, you will need something that can go to over one 4,000. I think most cameras these days will be able to do that anyway. And the next thing you will need is that you will need um, a, um, a flash, you will need a, a strobe. A strobe that will be able to do high speed sync as well and so the high speed sync is just that when you go beyond your normal sync speed on your camera the normal sync speed on most camera on sony is 250. now at 250 you'll not be able to get much of you know of your dramatic portrait you'll need to go beyond 250 especially in a day like this on a bright um you know day and so you need to go start going to like 1000 2000 and once you start getting to that you're going beyond your sync speed and to be able to compensate for that you will need probably a, 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 you will need a strobe that can do high speed sync but because high speed sync will allow to, for you to shoot beyond your sync speed and you'll be able to overpower the sun and give you the kind of drama you, that you want so my suggestion would be like something like goddess 80 uh, 400 pro you can even use Godot's AD200 um, for that as well. You can use speed light. So I think those are good. Now, alternatively, if you don't want, you don't have money to buy most expensive gear, what I would suggest is to have a screen. Now, a screen is like a white, you know, transparent, um, I would say it's softening the light. So in that regard, you might probably need an assistant or you might need to buy C stand, but that will cost you money as well. So if you have a friend or somebody who can follow you, um, if you can, you can even do the shit yourself, but it has to be uh, transparent and be able to, you know, um, just soften the light, you know, I'll probably show you guys an example. And what that does is that you'll be able to soften the light that is coming in. And then even if you use a speed light, a normal speed light that is like 80 pound, 100 pound, or, you know, whatever it is, you should be able to get a dramatic shot. Even when you're using a powerful stroke, I still, I think the best way, if you're looking at the best way to do it, I, I still think that a screen is very important. That is if you can get someone to do it. Now, if you don't have anybody to do it, uh, I think that you can get away with just using a strobe. Uh, but if you don't have anybody to help you with scream and you're in a bright sunny day, like maybe in a 35 degree or 40 degree, it will be hard for a strobe. Uh, it will be hard for a speed light to overpower the sun. I mean, the speed light will not be able to overpower the sun. It's because the strobe, like uh, 8200, 8400, they are more power, they have more power, more output of light, and then so they will be able to, you know, overpower the sun more than what a speed light will do. So, let me recap my suggestion. You need a lens, you need a camera, um, you need, obviously, a trigger to trigger your strobe, um, to trigger your off-camera flash, then you need a strobe itself and you need a stream. I mean, you need these things because they will all help you to achieve your dramatic portrait. Then all you now need to do is to work on poses with your, um, with your client, how you want them to pose. You need to probably give them directions and make sure they are comfortable with what they are doing and you try to ease them because a lot of people don't know how to pose so you know you have to start gradually to allow them uh, their freedom to let them know that you know it's not that difficult but to show them some steps you need to lead by example and show them some steps show them how to do some you know certain moves and some people will, will be reluctant and say look i don't want to do that i just want to do what i would do then let them be themselves let them do what they like to do and let them do their own moves and i think that is all that you will need to, um, that's very important for uh, doing a dramatic portrait. And for the settings, 
like I said, what is most important is that depending on how the sun is, uh, but I would say the sweet spot for most of the time, I would say is you being at ISO, the lowest ISO, which is 100 on my, uh, on most of the cameras, um, then you need to be, and your shutter speed should be around one over, at least start from one over 2000 when it's in a very hot sunny day, one over 2000, then you can go up, see how that looks like, then you go up from there uh to maybe eight thousand or five thousand whatever looks best to you um, and your aperture should be from i would say your widest aperture maybe 1.2 uh, uh, f uh, f2 i would say for more dramatic portrait it's just going to be i would say maybe f2 maximum of f2.8 that's what i would say uh, from f1.2 you can try f1.2 f1.3 i mean f1.8 f1.2 try different aperture and see which one suits your own artistic choice or what, which one you prefer uh, for to be able to show what you would like you know and then show your client if they like it as well and so i think aperture depends on your own artistic choice it depends on what you want to how you want your image to look like if you want blurry image obviously you need to shoot wide open at one f1.2 if you don't want everything to be blurred out maybe you like the environment and you still want to keep things in focus you might want to go to f2 or f2.8 you know to be able to get at least some things a little bit you know uh not you know just people to be able to see some of the things in the environment as well hi guys you guys are welcome to another of my behind the scene today i want to show you guys how you can shoot in the outdoor in a bright sunny day like this for this photo shoot there are certain things that you need to be able to achieve this now obviously you need your camera so i'm using my sony a7 IV right here paired with my sigma 85 f1.4 um and now my nd filter is in front of that and then also i have my trigger here also to trigger even the shot now I have my soft box right here. So this is my Godos 8600 Pro um, in, a, in a soft box. So that is my strobe that I'll be using. I have a C stand I'll be using right here. The, the ideal way to do this is to make sure, first of all, you expose for your ambience. So what I'm gonna be doing today, before I take the shot is, I'm gonna put my strobe off, make sure everything is off, and I'm going to expose for the sky. I'm going to expose for the sky once i expose for the sky and i can get back the color in the sky a little bit then my subject my model will be dark because i'm exposing for the sky but not to worry what i'm going to do is i'm going to use my strobe start at the lowest power and make sure that my strobe is lighting my object then we are going to see the result once i do that that should give me a very very good um, final result in doing it our way remember the best way you want to go about it is make sure everything is off once everything is off then you set uh you expose for your ambience once you get the exposure for your ambience right then you can take the shot so what i'm going to do right now is i'm just going to put my strobe on here because it's very windy so i don't want it to fall down that's why i'm just being um uh, just being careful so let's let my model come around so my model miguel come over so I have my model today. So here is my model. It's going to be my model today. Are you ready for the shoot? Are you excited? Are we good to go? So um, so it's going to be my model. Hopefully we're going to get the shot that we need. Uh, I'm excited. I just want to show you guys how you can take a shot and you can get a very cinematic shot, especially when you are outdoor in a broad daylight and very sunny light. <laughs> just need to you know go to post the uh, production and just do a few two care and there you know you can still bring down the if you if the light is too maybe it's too 
a little bit you can bring it down obviously in your software whichever one you choose but from there you have control you can you know it just saves you time because the picture is already good you just want to you know accentuate or just make it a little bit better and i think um you know dramatic portraits are just easy much more easier to edit in my own opinion and i think that's all that you need in terms of dramatic portrait and the gears that you need and you can get beautiful images i'll be able to obviously you guys have been able to see some images i've taken um, from you know from from the past of you know some of my dramatic portraits are taken uh, let me know which one of them that you like also let me also know which camera brand that you're using your let me know if you have any question in terms of uh, dramatic portrait if you're struggling with something or you know there's something that you might want to share as well all right guys i hope you guys enjoyed this uh, tutorial on dramatic portrait until next time don't forget you guys to follow me on all my social media and do actual photography on tiktok and youtube subscribe to my youtube channel and also click on the notification bell if you like this video please smash that like button that's how you can support this channel as well and on instagram as well follow me at cookie photography all right guys i'll see you guys next time and i say bye bye